According to the theory of evolution, the origin and development of the universe and all its systems can be explained solely on the basis of time, chance, and continuing processes. All living things have arisen from a single-celled organism. A second and opposing worldview is the concept of creation. According to the theory of creation, everything in the universe has come into being through the design, purpose, and deliberate acts of a supernatural creator. That means this creator created the universe, the earth, and all life on earth, including all types of plants and animals, as well as humans. On today's edition of Origins, Dinosaurs, have you been brainwashed? My friend, welcome to Origins. I'm Don Chapman and I'm your host. Today I have a great guest with me. My friend, Dr. Terry Mortensen from Answers in Genesis is here. And we're here today to talk about dinosaurs and how, how do they fit in with the biblical record? Do, do dinosaurs, were they made by God in the sixth day or did they live thousands of years before men? That's one we have to come to a conclusion on if we're going to really uh, figure out where we came from and where they fit in with all that. So, Dr. Terry, we're glad you're here. You're going to help us with that question, right? Good to be with you, Don. Yeah, let's talk about them. You know, uh, just before we were on the air, we were talking about how people are enamored with dinosaurs. I know little boys that can't say any other three-syllable word, but they can pronounce the name of every kind of dinosaur that they told us are alive. Yeah. Well, well we, we're seeing it in the cartoons. We're seeing it in major motion pictures and uh, uh, paler, uh, toys. Uh, T-shirts, all it, kinds of things. It so, sure has enamored our culture. I, I think they were fascinated because they were so huge. Yeah. And uh, because, as far as we know, there's none living today, and so there's a, a mystery about them. They sure get your imagination stirred up. Yep, yep. Good. You know, the evolutionists talk a lot about uh, the, the dinosaurs, and it's a major tool for them to get their message of evolution across to the public. And all of these uh, cartoons and movies we talked about, they're all... Uh, presenting the evolutionary view, either subtly or quite blatantly. Well, I'm really anxious to hear your view. Well, uh, let me start with this article that appeared in National Geographic uh, in 1999, in November of that year. Feathers for T-Rex, it asks the question. And in that, uh, in that article, they had uh, a discussion of a new fossil find, and uh, they had pictures of the fossil bones, and in the article they had full color pictures of what the creature looked like and they made a number of bold statements in big letters uh, including this one we can now say that birds are pteropods just as confidently as we say that humans are mammals now now look at that sentence they say we know we are just as confident now are humans mammals I believe that's an absolute no, truth no question about yes. that and yet they say we are just as confident that birds are actually dinosaurs uh, as we are that humans are mammals. Now, that's not the end of the story, though. This was November 1999. In January of 2000, a Chinese paleontologist wrote to National Geographic and said, I really hate to inform you about this, but the fossil that you paid $80,000 for at a fossil show in Utah is a fraud. <laughs> it was made by some very clever Chinese farmers in China. So all of this was based on a find in China, and two months after they told us how confident they were that this was absolute scientific fact, they find out the whole thing's a fraud. That's right. And so <laughs> they had egg on their face, yeah. and obviously they had to 
had to uh, find an explanation. So they hired an, an independent investigator. And in, I think it was October of that year, 2000, they had an article in the back of the magazine without lots of glitzy pictures and bold headlines explaining uh, how this happened. And it, it, it involved the highest uh, scientists at the highest level of American science. And uh, the, the reason that these farmers did this, obviously, was it was a good way to make a lot of money. Absolutely. Now, you know, as we talk about dinosaurs, the question that we often get from people is, how do you fit dinosaurs into the Bible? We have to have a pretty big Bible. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, the problem is when people ask that question, what they're really thinking behind that question is this. How do you fit dinosaurs viewed through the secular worldview into the Bible? That is, how do you fit the evolution of dinosaurs, the millions of years, life and death and struggle, and the fact that dinosaurs and man didn't exist at the same time? How do you fit that into the Bible? And uh, the answer is very simple. You don't. You don't fit that whole assumption of the Bible. That's right. Well, then will you tell us how you do put dinosaurs in the Bible? Yeah. What we've got to do is we've got to start with the Bible, and then we can explain dinosaurs. So let's do that. I appreciate it. First thing we need to know, Don, is that God created the world in six days, and he created different things on different days. And the Bible tells us that uh, all of the land animals were made on the sixth day. So that means that even though the word dinosaur doesn't appear there in Genesis 1, they were made on the sixth day because they're land animals. Now, there were uh, flying reptiles and swimming reptiles, but those are not strictly speaking dinosaurs. Dinosaur means great lizard, and so they were made on the sixth day. Now, we go on to the... Uh, to uh, picture that, and uh, we, we see Adam and Eve there with the dinosaurs, and they're not eating Adam and Eve alive. Uh, and we, we use a picture like this in one of our children's books, and we ask the question, how did our artists know what color to make the dinosaurs? How did they know? I don't know. Well, we occasionally we, we dig up fossilized dinosaur skin, but it doesn't have its original color. Right. So how do we know? And the answer is, we don't. We're just guessing. They could have looked like this. We've got frogs that are every color in the rainbow. And uh, so we're, we use them to help people understand the fossils are the bones we dig up, but we don't know everything. We have to speculate, and we could be completely wrong about what the color was, and in some cases, even what they actually look like in the soft parts. Now. In, uh, in the evolutionary view of things, the dinosaurs, especially the T-Rex, were these ferocious uh, carnivores that just ripped creatures apart. But how do we know what they ate? Well, if we start with the Bible, uh, we go to the end of uh, the Genesis chapter 1, and it says, Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit for, with seed in it, they will be food for you, for you. And so that's what God said to Adam and Eve. But uh, then the very next verse says this, And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. So the Bible indicates that both man and the animals, all the different animals, were vegetarian at the beginning. And, Genesis uh, 1, everybody's a vegetarian. Everyone's a vegetarian. Okay. And lots of things that are, are plants, or seeds, are very hard. So you can understand how that would need to, you'd need to have sharp teeth to eat those plants. And they're not necessarily proof of uh, carnivore activity. Uh, this is an example of bat's teeth. These are six different varieties of bats. And you look at those teeth and you say, okay, which one ate blood or fish or fruit or insects or nectar and pollen or small mammals? Only one of those sets of teeth are for carnivore activity. And yet... They all look like they could be. Which one is the one that eats carnivores? It's B. I would never guess. You'd never guess. So sharp teeth are not necessarily an indication of a, a meat-eating uh, diet. That's fascinating. So we believe that at the beginning, before Adam and Eve sinned, the dinosaurs were plant-eating, and then after the fall, uh, they may have started to eat meat. 
Now, many people say, yes, but the word dinosaur isn't in the Bible. The Bible doesn't talk about dinosaurs. Well, the reason it's not in the Bible, our, our main English translation is the King James Version, translated in 1611, but the word dinosaur was not invented until 1841 by Sir Richard Owen, a British scientist. Uh, the word locomotive isn't in the Bible either, nor is the word computer, because they weren't <laughs> invented. And our, uh, we've got modern translations in English since this time, but the problem is that since that word is invented, almost all the Bible scholars have been, have been influenced by evolutionary thinking, so they don't think that dinosaurs existed with man, so they don't translate uh, the words. But there is a word in the Bible that uh, appears uh, dozens of times. It's the word tanin, and in the King James Bible, it's usually translated as dragon. And it's interesting when we look at the passages that uh, they very well could be describing dinosaurs. Let's just look at uh, one example. In Isaiah 27, it says, In that day the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, with his fierce and great and mighty sword, even Leviathan, the twisted serpent, and he will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. So he's talking about some kind of creature that lives in the sea, that is a, a terrible creature. Now, is Leviathan and, and dragon, are those synonyms in that verse? Yeah, they're talking about the same creature. That's the creature same animal. Here. That's not two yeah. different animals. Right. Okay, now and there's a whole mythology, of course, that comes clear up through, what, 17th century, 16th century? When did King George live in England? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that talks about slain dragons. Well, we're going we're gonna to look at that in just a minute. But, okay. yeah, there's a lot of testimony to, uh, to creatures that seem like they have characteristics like dinosaurs. In fact, there are dinosaur legends all over the world, not just all over in the Europe. World, yeah. yeah, and the 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 uh, key animal that represents China is a dragon, of course. Yes, right. The uh, the uh, on the flag of Wales is a picture of a dragon. Huh. So th it's very fascinating that there's this testimony. But Isaiah 27 could well have been describing a plesiosaur, yes. a, a large reptilian creature that lived in the sea. Then we have the fascinating passage in Job 40. This is considered by scholars to be probably the oldest book in the Bible. Job lived at the time of Abraham. And in chapter 40, it describes a creature by the name of Behemoth. And God says, he's speaking to Job. And in chapters 38 and 39, Job uh, has been getting a, a, a lecture from God, a whole series of questions. And God talks about all kinds of different animals, bears and deers, creatures that are alive today. Right. And then he turns and talks about behemoth. And he said, Behemoth, which I made along with you, which feeds on grass, so it's a vegetarian, like an ox, what strength he has in his loins, what power in the muscles of his belly. So this is a, a very strong creature. He goes on in verses uh, 18 and 19, his bones are tubes of bronze, his limbs like rods of iron, he ranks first among the works of God. So the creature that God is describing here is the greatest creature that God has made on the land, the first of the works of God. But there's one more verse that describes this creature. I didn't read that yet. That's verse 17. Let's look at what it says. His tail sways like a cedar. Now, the cedar trees in the Middle East were, were uh, some of the largest trees. And so let's, uh, let's draw a picture Oh, I forgot to say one more thing. The NIV study Bible and many other study Bibles in the margins, the scholars often say, well, behemoth was possibly a hippopotamus or an elephant. But when they say this, they're not thinking very carefully about the text. Let's look at, uh, there's, there's a tail like a cedar tree, a big tail. You know, uh, we can ask the kids watching the program maybe, have they ever <laughs> seen an elephant with a tail like that? Or a hippopotamus swaying its tail like a cedar tree? But there are creatures that had tails like cedar trees. The fossil record shows us there were creatures called a brontosaurus or a potosaurus that had huge tails. But why don't the Bible scholars even think about that? Obviously, that's not the animal God's talking about there. Yep, that's right. And uh, just to uh, drive that home... Uh, people, when they go to the zoo, should look at the elephant tail. That's nothing like a cedar no. tree. And uh, the same with the uh, hippopotamus, a just a little stubby tail. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's no reason, other than the evolutionary brainwashing of our culture, there's no reason to believe that dinosaurs didn't live with man. 
and uh, that they weren't je vegetarian, just as God said at the beginning. They lived for, together for many, many years, but then something happened. And, and we need to know what happened to the dinosaurs, because as far as I know, there aren't any around today. Yep. If they live contemporary with man and not around today, we've got to give our viewers a good answer as to what happened to them. Right now, we've got to take a break, and I know you don't want to go anywhere, because when we come back, Dr. Terry's going to tell us what happened to the dinosaurs, and I know you want to know, so stay with us through the break. See you in a minute. Creation versus evolution, you weigh the evidence. The dinosaur bones, engineering masterpieces. Interestingly, it was an evolutionary scientist who said the bones of a Brachiosaurus are a masterpiece of engineering. The design of the vertebrae was such that it provided great support for the huge dinosaur, but was also extremely lightweight. Evolutionists claim that all life, including dinosaurs, were the product of random processes. Yet, they make statements about the wonderful design seen everywhere we look. Today's guest on Origins, Dr. Terry Mortensen, is also the author of a new book entitled The Great Turning Point. You'll definitely want this book for your personal library. Book orders are being taken at 1-800-778-3390. That's 1-800-778-3390. Dr. Mortensen is also a speaker, researcher, and writer for Answers in Genesis. For more information, write to Answers in Genesis, P.O. Box 510, Hebron, Kentucky, 41048. Or visit them online at www.answersingenesis.org. We're back, and we're glad you've stayed with us. I've got... Dr. Terry Mortensen from Answers in Genesis here with me. And, uh, you know, we've been waiting with bated breath for you to get back so he can tell us what happened to the dinosaurs. If dinosaurs were contemporary with men, as young Earth creationists believe, then why aren't there any around today? So, Dr. Terry, you've got to help us out here. What's going on? Well, uh, as we said, dinosaurs were living on the Earth at the same time as man. Contemporary. But then the Bible talks a very, about a very significant event in Genesis 6 to uh, chapter 9, and that is the event of Noah's flood. God destroyed the world because of its wickedness, and everything that was not in Noah's ark perished, and uh, this was a violent event. The biblical account indicates that it was a flood that covered the whole earth, and that it was uh, associated with very, very violent uh, activity in the earth's crust and the torrential rains. So creatures, anything not in the ark on the land would have died. But wait a minute. Didn't you teach us that, that, God, that uh, God commanded Noah to take two of every creature on the ark? That's right. Two of every kind of land animal and bird. Okay. So does that include dinosaurs? Absolutely. The dinosaurs were land animals. So, so he would got, have had to take two of every kind. How do you do a T-Rex on the ark? Does he get a floor all to himself or what? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, uh, again, we go to the Bible. And if we start with the Bible, we can make sense of things. Okay. Because the Bible tells us how big the ark was. It's yeah. a lot bigger than most people imagine. How it, many uh, train cars did you tell us? Uh, about 560 railroad stock cars. It was three levels and uh, was about one and a half football fields long, about two-thirds of a football field wide, and four stories tall. So it was big. Yeah. But then the Bible tells us one other thing, that Noah was to, to take two of every kind of land, animal, and bird so that they could reproduce and fill the earth after the flood. Okay. Now, dinosaurs are different than most other creatures. They're, they're reptiles, and reptiles generally never stop growing. You know, you and I stop growing 
uh, at least upwards. We sometimes right. grow outwards, That's but right. uh, reptiles keep growing. So if Noah took the largest dinosaurs, he would be taking the oldest, which would have no reproductive potential after the flood. So he wouldn't take grandma and grandpa T-Rex, he'd take teenager T-Rex or teenager apatosaurs, and those are much smaller. And so uh, there was plenty of room on the ark. So I just wanna, I wanna make sure our viewers got this. Reptiles are the only kind of creatures that continue to get bigger the longer they live. That, so the really big ones would have probably been hundreds of years old. Right. So, and, uh, and, and not have the, the reproductive potential. So if you took a, 12, 10, a 10, 12, 15, 20-year-old T-Rex, it wouldn't be that big of an animal. Right. In fact, uh, the largest dinosaur eggs we've ever found are about the size of a British uh, rugby football. You know, okay. a little bigger than American football. Okay. So all dinosaurs, even the biggest ones, started out they small. Started out real small. And uh, we don't know how how quickly they became reproductively uh, so active. It's, it's very feasible to take di to have room to take dinosaurs, even the biggins, on the ark. That's uh, absolutely. Okay. Now the the flood came and yeah. uh, floods. Uh, rip up sediment and transport it somewhere else and deposit right. it. There would right. be all these dead animals mixed in. Right. And so what would you expect to find? You'd expect to find uh, creatures buried in rock layers that were once sediment, and you'd expect to find this all over the earth. Usually their bones are all ripped apart, scattered in different places, which shows that they aren't buried where they just fell over and died of old age. Right. Something ripped them apart. Occasionally we find, as in this picture, uh, almost a complete skeleton in its original uh, skeletal connections. And uh, we have to ask the question, how did they get there? The flood is a perfect explanation. You've so got... you see it as being very consistent with Scripture, not as opposed to Scripture a in any way? Absolutely. Now, I believe that the evolutionists really have the, the problem here. There's lots of theories that the evolutionists have for explaining how the dinosaurs disappeared. They believe 65 million years ago. Uh, there have been exp explanations like they all had acid indigestion or uh, the mammals ate all of their eggs. Of course, why did all the mammals eat all of the eggs at precisely the same, same time, time in history? The asteroids um, from outer yeah, the big, space. Yep, yeah. The big theory, the most popular theory is the asteroid impact. But that could explain how all the dinosaurs died, but that doesn't explain how they all got buried in sediments and fossilized. Yes. The flood makes much makes better sense. sense. Are, are all the dinosaurs gone? Could there be any alive today? Well, that's a very intriguing question. Uh, there's some evidence that they haven't been, if they are extinct, they haven't been extinct for very long. Let me show you some of that. All right. There are, out in the uh, southwestern United States, uh, artistic features in the uh, caves or on the sides of the rocky uh, cliffs, what we call petroglyphs. These are etchings in the stone. And uh, here's a petroglyph that you can't see very well. And so an investigator took a piece of paper and chalk and colored over that, rubbing on the stone. Now, what kind of creature does that look like? It sure looks like a dinosaur to me. Yeah. Now, we find in petroglyphs, we find drawings of deer, and uh, bears and horses, other things that man lived with. And we have to ask the question, how could the Indians, in, back 2,000 years ago maybe, 1,000 years ago that did these etchings, how could they draw a creature like this unless they'd actually seen it? Yeah. And we see these kinds of things in many places. So um, this indicates that there is human testimony that if uh, the dinosaurs became extinct. They didn't become extinct 65 million years ago. They became extinct in relatively recent history. It's a pretty good bet that a dinosaur didn't draw that dinosaur. That's right. You had that's to have a human there to yeah, draw that. That's right. Which is tremendous evidence that they were contemporary with human beings. Now there's another thing here we have to think about. And that is, you know, the, the, uh, the, dino the evolutionists will say, well, we don't see any dinosaurs living and the fossils are in rock layers, uh, you know, very deep down, so they died out long ago. Well, we've got to be careful about that argument because of creatures like this. This is a uh, coelacanth. It was known from the fossil record to be, uh, have died out, the evolutionists believe it died out about the same time as the dinosaurs because as we come up through the fossil record, we don't find any more coelacanths after the uh, layers where the dinosaurs are. 
Well, that was what they believed until about 1938, because in about 1938, they found off the, sea, off the coast of Madagascar the coelacanth swimming in the oceans, the exact in the deep same oceans. Fish. And it is exactly the same. Wow. This is supposedly 65 million years old, but the coelacanth hasn't changed at all in 65 million years. And so the coelacanth is just one of many creatures that has been called a living fossil. And so the fact that we don't, that we only have evidence of a creature in the fossil record doesn't mean the creature didn't live at any other time, and it doesn't mean that the creature is not alive today. If you have questions about this or any of the subjects relating to or Origins, you can write us at Origins, CTV, Wall, PA, 15148, or there at the uh, email address on your screen. Send me your questions, send me your comments. We'd love to hear from you. But, you know, I just uh, w want you to know that the fact that dinosaurs were there doesn't mean that they weren't there at the same time that people were there. It's not that we're refuting dinosaurs. It's that we're saying that God's Word is true. And if you begin with understanding the truth of God's Word, dinosaurs and everything else that we find in the rocks and in the world and in science fit perfectly into God's plan. And so I just want to remind you as we finish up today that it's God's view that He made you, and that should be your worldview too. Hope to see you again on Origins. And until then, God bless you. Thank you for watching this edition of Origins. If you'd like a copy of the information presented today, you can download a PDF file of program number 448 from our website at www.originstv.org. For a printed version, send a $5 donation to cover shipping and handling to Cornerstone Television, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148.